Hi, I'm uh, Warren Darling, I'm farming just south of Tamaru. Um, we uh, an arable property, farming 300 hectares. It's a coastal uh, location. We have a, ro a crop rotation of wheat, barley and all seed rape. Yeah, it's done on a tonnes per hectare. Um, and at the moment it's held by uh, an English farmer at 12.2 ton, metric ton per hectare. Well, after last year's harvest, um, our yields were uh, up reasonably high and it was just a, a bit of a joke one day. We decided to just see if there was a world record. Um, and at that stage when we checked on it, um, we were only a ton per hectare behind um, the record at that stage. So um, we sort of thought, well, with a bit better management, um, we could actually probably, and a favourable season, um, we could get up to that. I guess it's the Olympics of um, growing grain, um, or growing barley in this situation. So you come out on top of the world, you yeah, know, hopefully after the day we'll know whether we've got there. I'm Greg Carr and I'm the founder of the Carr Group and my day-to-day -day role is Managing Director of the Class Harvest Centre. Our company specialises in farm machinery. Our big focus is on uh, combine harvesters for the arable farmer. We've sort of always been here to help Warren if anything was needed, make sure the drill was right, supply to Warren a Bicon fruit spreader, which uh, allowed the variable rate for fertiliser application, which has allowed him to get a, hopefully a more even yield. When Warren mentioned that he was going to go for it, we had to make sure the drill was set up correctly and was going to get down to the seeding rate he wanted, but that we went back to the factory and uh, ultimately got that sorted, which Warren was happy with. If you don't get your building blocks right to start with, you're going to be behind the eight ball just at the end of it. So you've got to get those building blocks right and that's all your fertiliser inputs are, are matched to what you're trying to achieve at, the, uh, at a world record attempt you know, of a, a crop like this. We uh, were involved with the soil testing of the paddock to start with. Um, that would have been done down in last February, March period. Uh, then did the recommendations for what fertiliser was to put in for the paddock. Well, I think it's great, you know, the, the wheat record down in Southland and, and now a barley attempt here in Canterbury is fantastic. It shows that New Zealand arable farmers have got the ability to do it, you know, and attention to detail is fantastic. My job is to verify everything that's going on, make sure it's done to the letter as required, uh, make sure any paperwork is above board, and that everyone does their job. I think I'm just part of part of one of one of the one of the many cogs in the wheel. And uh, obviously, Warren's done all the work and teeing everything up, and he's done a great job. Today is is really just about being here to have the plan that we've signed off. The area itself has to be certified by a licensed server. So we have a series of control marks that we've checked onto and, and the area is, in, is orientated in relative to that local circuit, which is um, in this case Timaru 2000. It's fantastic, it's um, great for South Canterbury, great for the landowners and great for everyone involved. Rowerbank's sort of been a, part, a banking partner with the Darlings now for over eight, eight years. And uh, over that time, we've seen the Darlings fine tune their farming systems, and that in terms of the increasing the productivity, but keeping a lid on their costs to do that. The key thing for us is that we've been able to increase productivity in a sustainable and uh, environmentally friendly way. For Rowerbank, uh, what our core values is that sustainability, and to be able to potentially get this record in a sustainable way is, is, is really gratifying for us. We started working before um, the seed was actually in the ground uh, because what Bayer does, uh, we have a, a great range of seed uh, treatment programs. So it's a fungicide and insecticide that uh, attached to the seed. Uh, it protects the young germinating seed and the seedling from early disease and from, from insect pests. So really uh, the preparation just started, started before um, the crop was actually in the ground here. If we look into the future and if we take a bit of a global perspective, We've got seven and a half billion people in the world at the moment. Uh, in 2050, it will be about nine billion people. Every bun bun seed, we have to provide healthy food and sustainable food for a growing population. And high yields, like we've seen here, uh, will contribute towards that. Well, through Canterbury Seed and my agents here, uh, I've been working with uh, Warren for um, three years 
on developing our varieties here in New Zealand. At this kind of yield level, uh, you need to tailor the agronomy specifically to the variety. So we're talking individual varieties and how best to manage them to exploit the potential. It does demonstrate to, um, to our own farmers in Europe that sunlight is very important, water is less important, it's mainly what comes from, from up there, the sunlight. It's pretty near perfect as far as I'm concerned. If I wrote the textbook and said what we needed, um, this would be pretty close. My role with Warren would be, um, originally it was probably start with choice of variety, um, type of fertiliser we put in the programme. We um, On these fields we do something called um, precision soil testing, so we, we use um, we only apply the right amount of fertiliser for each particular hectare of the crop, so we, we individually test each he hectare. We do variety, seed rate and then take the crop through from weed control right through to disease control. When I go back to the UK, which I do quite regularly, um, the guys there always ask me why are the world records here? And it's because it's just a lovely place for things to grow. Um, we get these lovely clear bright sunny days and a um, combination of that, especially here being by the coast a little bit cooler, that combination is just ideal for growing cereals and in fact ideal for growing most things to be honest. Canterbury Seed as a company has been working with them for well over five years now, and uh, if not longer, and we enjoy a really good uh, working relationship with, with both Warren and Joy. I think it's significant on a global scale. I think it really uh, uh, highlights and showcases New Zealand agriculture to the world, that we are very capable, competent uh, growers down here in, in this part of the world, and uh, we can certainly foot it with the best farmers in the world. I just think that um, it's very courageous of, of Warren and Joy to attempt this. They've put a lot of time, energy, planning into this, and like I say, this has been half a decade in the planning um, from, uh, I guess, Warren and Joy's farming practices and also the other stakeholders that have helped Warren and Joy. Really, I'm just um, thrilled regarding the attempt. I'm pretty confident they're going to achieve it today, so very pleased to be a part of it. Uh, gut feeling is we've just got over the line. Uh, we had to beat that 12.2 um, until we get that last weight back from the Weybridge. Um, we're not, not uh, shouting yet, but it uh, looks like we're going to be there. So that's good. We had fantastic help from everybody else as far as um, all the companies involved um, right through the whole process and we've uh, finally got there.